So we're busy preparing to receive the first delegation of the ANC coming to Cape Town, coming back into the country. The leadership arriving to meet with Tikla. Uh, and we're arranging all this. That weekend, I think on a third, no, Wednesday, we get a call from Lusaka. That Jake, Stala and myself must go to Lusaka uh, to meet there. And so we missed out. And you know, our heart was so sore. Uh, so we fly to Lusaka uh, that uh, Friday morning, and the leadership was arriving that day. We fly out in the morning, we get to Lusaka, and we sit around the table, and the guy say, well, we've been saying we want to engage in discussions. We need to prepare for a new constitution for South Africa. Obviously, that is something that the people of South Africa must be involved in. How, however, what is going to be our positions when we have these discussions with the government? We look up to you guys around the table. Uh, let's work together to do that. What are the positions that we are going to put across? So that's the first meeting that we have. And that becomes the, uh, that's the meeting now of the, we then co-opted, get co-opted into what became known as the ANC Constitutional Committee. Community Centre was thrust right into the heart of preparing for a new South Africa. And we had to work flat out to ensure, one, that as the democratic movement, we were ready for the negotiations and that we had uh, something that we put on the table, right? That's the first point. Secondly, we had to mobilize the community, not just around, we had to mobilize the people to get involved in our positions um, and help us to articulate. Uh, we, 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 you know, we had this thing all the time that we discussed, we were discussing that we want to come up with a constitution that will serve us well when we are in opposition. Because when you are in power, you hardly need the law to protect you. You need the law when you are out of office. And so we must do, we must come up with a constitution that will serve the people of South Africa, even when they are not in government. Yeah, so, and to do that, we thought that it would be important for us to be engaged in, to mobilize various democratic institutions throughout the country, that they be part and parcel, so that our positions, when we argue with the regime, we know that you have the backing of the community. And the center then began to play that critical role to help <clears throat> to mobilize the communities. And that's how it started. In 1990, there was a big fight <laughs> between the Civic in Cape Town and the Taxi Association. There were two taxi associations there. Um, one, I think, was called WEPTA, and then the other one was called SAPTA. But we can check those things. I can't remember my memory. But there was a big fight, and people died. And we, from the center, we thought that uh, let's let's go in and get involved. So Dala and I went there. Uh, we're both UDF, both community law center people. So we decided now, now let's go. So we went there. We sat, we had a discussion with them. So please, guys, <coughs> we have to talk to the civil. So eventually, we had to spend a lot of time. They didn't trust us. Civic is a member of the UDF, you know. It was one of our affiliates. They thought that we were biased, and we sat and spoke to them. And then we moved to the Civic. We thought these were our comrades, it's going to be easier. All the hostility we encountered. This guy said, did you ask them to give you the hit list? 
because our names are on that list. If somebody is going to kill you, why must they tell me that they're going to kill you? You know, I mean, it's a stupid question. So I was about to respond and tell her, pull me, so I said, oh, let me respond to that question. I said, comrades, I'm sorry. I made a mistake. I should have asked that question. I didn't. We spent the next five minutes arguing about this mistake and, and, uh, and eventually they accepted his apology that we didn't ask for the hit list. <clears throat> but the meeting then proceeded. <laughs> and people accepted that. And we got them to sit around the table and we successfully negotiated a peace, a truce. But I'm just telling you how <laughs> we managed to defuse a very tense situation by just accepting in his style, yeah, comrades, I'm sorry, I, I made a mistake. We identified key critical issues. And the first one for us was the Constitutional Court. Whether South Africa should have a Constitutional Court or not. You'll recall that this is a continental issue. Constitutional Court is in Europe. We traditionally follow the British, you know. And so once we, we took the decision that the Constitution is the supreme law of the land, not Parliament, right? Because our inheritance is the British, the parliamentary sovereignty. And so our view was immediately that that's what we had to popularize. And let's work on it. And it would be important for us to get the academics the judiciary to come to the party. And so that was the first conference that we organized, the one on the Constitutional Court. And therefore, we worked together with the guys. By then, Albi, Kada, Zola, uh, and Bridget had joined us to become a team. We're all then a team together. That's what we worked on. That was the first one. And, and, and we selected that because for us, it was the key. So we dealt with Constitutional court, the land question, affirmative action. It became a big issue. Um, we had a conference that we, we organized in Port Elizabeth on this issue of affirmative action. And again, we followed the similar trend, you know. And then we did local government, regional, which was provincial structures. Because at the time, the real issue was about uh, government structures, federalism or unitary state. And at that time, we thought that uh, F was a swear word. It was absolutely a swear word. I'm not afraid to say this. And I'll repeat it all the time. He has been the best minister this country has ever had. Best minister of justice this country has ever had. I'm saying before and after. There was a time when the civil servants, Minister of Justice, says they would prepare speeches for the then minister. They would always preface what they said, as the former minister used to say. And Dalla became a point of reference uh, for a number of people. He did exceptionally well, but I think that five years was not long enough for him to see through uh, the the changes that he had brought about. But most of the stuff that he did, um, everybody has followed on his footsteps. They've tried to perfect what he started. But I take my hat off to Nico. Um, I really take my hat off to Nico. Nico was left literally and truly speaking in the proverbial ledge. You know, and he picked up the pieces and rebuilt the center and even sort of changed the focus of it really to be an academic institution. So the center's work was not just about helping us with the constitution and all that, even when we were in government continue to rely on the support that came from, from, from the center. 
And so, for example, I mean, in the, um, now I was in the Constitutional Assembly and we needed all the guys we were working with at the centre to come now and advise us as we're busy drafting the Constitution. And that's how we ended up with some of the guys working with us. Exactly, exactly. All those guys, we, we put them in there because we knew them and we had confidence in, yeah. in the guys and we had worked with them. So we got them into the teams. You couldn't have done better. Um, you know, Dala has done so well for this country. Um, can't just be that uh, he will be remembered uh, <clears throat> just as a minister of justice, you know, it's 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 recognition of the contribution that Dala has made to that institution, not just to the country, but to the institution itself. Mm -hmm.